everyone, Sabrina here from Scrappy Tales Crafts, and today I'm creating six cards using this new Scrappy Tales die set called Outline Tulips. For my first card, I already did some die cutting here. I cut the outline leaves from dark green cardstock, the shadow leaves from light green cardstock, the outline tulips from dark yellow cardstock, and then the shadow tulips from light yellow cardstock. So I'm going to be doing some tone on tone layering. I'm gonna pull in my light yellow shadow layers and I'm going to give them a little bit of colored with my mustard seed distress oxide ink. I am using a brand new blender brush here from Amazon. I love these because they're white bristled and the color is on the handle. Plus they look really nice displayed in my new craft room. That's right, this is the first video I have filmed in my new craft room. You can tell, or at least I hope you can tell, that the lighting is much better because I am filming right in front of a window now. I also have two desk lights, which I never had lights before. So I can definitely tell the difference and it's really nice that I can now work well into the night and still have a well-lit video for you all. So I'm really excited. There are going to be some more changes coming, but for now, um, yeah, I think this is a good start. So I wanted to give my leaves some dimension as well. So I used Lucky Clover to add some dimension at the bottom of the stems. And now I am working on my sky. And as the title of the video suggests, I wanted to focus my color schemes on complementary colors. I might make a series out of this because I have really been into learning about color theory and what colors look good together. So I'm going to start with complementary colors. Maybe my next video I'll do like adjacent colors in the color wheel because they also pair well nicely together. Um, but the complementary color of yellow is purple. So I am using shaded lilac and dusty concord. That shaded lilac color was a brand new ink pad. So I got ink all over my desk. Um, but I do like this combination a lot. And now I am going to splatter on some pearlescent watercolor. I haven't done this in a while, so it's nice to just add a little bit of shimmer to your background. So now I am gluing my outline layers on top of my shadow layers. So I'm taking my dark yellow outline flowers and gluing them onto my light yellow shadow flowers to create a two-toned yellow flower it's very subtle, but the outlines add a little bit of dimension and detail to these tulips, and I think they turned out really pretty. So I'm going to do the same thing with these stems and leaves. I'm going to glue the darker green outline on top of the shadow layer that has the ink blending. I did not add any ink blending to the outlines just because these are really dainty, and I did not want to risk bending or ripping these layers. So now I'm going to bring back my slimline purple background and just arrange these tulips in a row. In the die set, you do get five tulip heads and two stems. So you can see with just the five tulips that you get, you can really fill a slimline card nicely. You can cut even more from different colors. You can create like a row of rainbow tulips. I think that would be really pretty, but I did decide to stick with complementary colors here. You can see on the left, I have an ink blended circle. I used mustard seed and squeezed lemonade, but I thought that the yellow circle was a little bit too distracting. So I'm going to end up just stamping my sentiment directly onto the ink blended panel. I also die cut a slimline scallop stitch rectangle from white cardstock, and I'm just going to layer that behind to help frame this little scene. So I'm happy with the layout of these tulips. I'm gonna go ahead and glue some of them directly onto the purple panel, and then others I'm going to pop up with some foam tape. And for the sentiment on this card, I chose a sentiment from the new Timeless Tulip stamp set. And it says, I've loved you from the moment our two lips met. So it's a little pun. So this would be a really great anniversary card or Valentine's Day card. So here I'm still trying to figure out if I want that yellow circle, but end up just deciding to white heat emboss the sentiment directly onto the purple background. By the way, I forgot to mention that I blended Dusty Concord and Shaded Lilac on watercolor paper 
it's a lot easier to blend. So if you're ever having trouble blending your Distress Oxides or you're new to it, I would definitely recommend trying out watercolor paper. It does dull the color a little bit, but it's easy to kind of practice on and you still get really nice results. So I did decide to pop up my purple panel with foam tape directly onto my white scallop rectangle. And then to embellish all of my cards in today's video, I am using these um, heart droplets. So they're clear drops and they take on the color that's underneath them. So they just add a very subtle sparkle. I kind of like that they look like raindrops and they blend nicely with those um, pearlescent watercolor splatters in the background. So I decided to mat this scallop panel onto some yellow cardstock. This is the same yellow cardstock I used for the outline of the tulip heads. And then I'll just glue this panel directly onto my slimline card base, which is eight and three quarters by three and three quarters. And then that is going to complete my first card. I wanted to create a similar card in an A2 size, and I also had some leftover tulips. I had the inner portions of the dark yellow outlines. I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second here. I'm splattering some pearlescent watercolor onto another ink blended background. I use the exact same colors here. And now I'm gluing a light yellow outline layer on top of a light yellow shadow layer. And I'm going to inlay the dark yellow pieces that I cut from card one back into this tulip. So these inner pieces came inside the dark yellow outlines that I used for card one. So this time I have a light yellow outline and I'm inlaying those dark yellow pieces. And what's unique about this, as opposed to just layering it on top of a shadow layer, is that you're going to create an inlay that is completely flush. So Every little layer that you glue inside the outline is going to be at the same level as the outline. So it's a really cool effect. I remember inlaying was a huge trend a couple years ago and everyone was doing it and I couldn't understand why because I'm like, why wouldn't you just do a dark yellow shadow layer and layer the outline on top? Like why bother, you know, taking that time to do this? But the reason is because everything is completely smooth and it looks like an optical illusion. It's really hard to tell on camera. It's something you're gonna have to try on your own and see because it's a really cool look. And it's definitely, I feel, worth the extra time. It doesn't add a whole lot of extra time. And if you're into puzzles, you'll really enjoy this inlay technique. So I did the same thing with the leaves. And for this card, I wanted to create a little bouquet. So I am arranging all of my leaves and stems I'm gonna go with five flowers because I guess odd numbers are more pleasing to the eye. And some of the stems, I'm cutting the leaf off just so that I'm left with the stem. And then I am trying to make sure that I am leaving enough space for my sentiment, which you can see on the bottom left. I used Happy Easter, which came in the new Easter Blessings 4x6 stamp set. So here I'm tucking in some more stems and I like the way that this looks. So I'm going to go ahead and attach all of the tulip heads to the stems. You can use press and seal here, but I find that if I just am careful and I'm holding down the other pieces with my other fingers, I can glue everything down one at a time. So now I'm gluing the stems together. And then once everything is sort of attached, I can then flip the whole thing around and then add glue. And that's gonna make sure that everything stays in place. But before I do that, I did wanna add a little bow to my bouquet. So I have some purple and white twine here. I just tied into a bow and then I'll glue that into the center of the bouquet. And then I'm going to stamp out my sentiment before I have you know a lot of dimension on the card i thought i would go ahead and stamp that out so i'm going to white heat emboss it just like i did on the first card i liked how that turned out so here i'm just heat setting it and 
and then I'm going to just attach all of these tulips down with my art glitter glue. I decided to glue them flat because I'm going to pop up this entire panel. So I'm going to take a white stitch rectangle just like I did with the slimline card. But this I felt like I needed some more yellow so I'm going to mat it onto that bright yellow cardstock that I used for the outline of the tulips. And this is just going to leave like a sixteenth of an inch. It's very skinny, but it's going to add that little bit of yellow that I wanted. Again, I'm going to take my clear heart droplets. I'm going to add five of them. Just to add a little bit of sparkle to the card. I did pop up the purple watercolor panel onto that yellow mat and then I'll glue the yellow mat flat with my ATG tape onto my white scallop rectangle. And that is going to complete my second card. So purple and yellow is checked off the list. The next complementary colors on the color wheel are blue and orange. So I have some shades of blue cardstock that I'm going to cut with a stitch rectangle die. You can actually double cut if you're using thin paper, like I think this is 65 pound colored cardstock, you can cut double um, if you have a Gemini. So that's what I did there. I'm going to take all three of these rectangles and cut them at once with my cutter pillar. I'm cutting strips. These are three quarters of an inch wide and they're just a bunch of blue strips and they have that stitching on the side from that stitch rectangle die. I'm going to go ahead and cut out a white stitch rectangle and then I'm going to take all of my three quarter inch strips and layer them creating a gradient. So you can do this with your inks if you want to but I didn't have the exact shades of blue that I wanted so I opted to go with colored cardstock here. So I like how that gradient looks like. I'm going to go ahead and just glue them down with my art glitter glue. And then I can work on my tulips. So I decided to make the outlines white. So I'm gluing some white outlines on top of each other. I think I layer three onto a green shadow layer for the leaves. And then for the tulips, I'm going to use an orange shadow layer. But by adding three of each outline layer, you're going to get some nice dimension. So there's really a lot of different techniques you can use with these outline die cuts. You can do an inlay, you can just layer on top of the shadow layer, you can create a stained glass effect, which is what I'm doing here. By layering the outline several times and creating dimension, you can then add the outline onto your shadow layer and then go inside each crevice with your, um, what's it called, glossy accents and make these flowers look like stained glass. And I would have done that, but I could not find my glossy accents because I have recently moved, but that's definitely what I would have done for this card. So for my sentiment, I just found one in my stash that says, just for you, I white heat embossed it onto a black banner. And I am just going to start gluing my flowers down and my sentiment. And that is basically going to complete my third card. This one was really quick and simple, but I think having that dimensional outline really adds a lot to this card. So once again, I'm going to scatter a few of these heart droplets and then that will finish off the card. I am going to mat it on black cardstock. I love black mats. You guys know this. I haven't done it in a while, so I think I'm back on the black mat train. I just love how, especially with bright colors, black can really make your colors pop. So I'm going to add ATG tape behind my black mat and just mount that onto my A2 card base. And that is going to complete my third card with our second uh, complementary color scheme, which is blue and orange. So I am going to continue with blue and orange for my fourth card. I have some leftover strips here, so I decided to put them to use. 
and glue them on this scrap of yellow cardstock. I don't need very many of these because I plan on die cutting a heart. So instead of doing a gradient this time, I just went with a pattern. So I did light, medium, dark, light, medium, dark, just so that I could have an even amount of each color showing. You can see at first I was thinking of doing the gradient again, but I just decided I want to use as much blue as I can. So I'm not gonna overthink it here. I'm just gonna glue a bunch of strips down. So that seems to be enough. I'm gonna go ahead and die cut that heart out. I'm also going to die cut one of my tulip heads from black cardstock and then a hello word die from black cardstock. By the way, that tulip head was an outline. The shadow is gonna be that same orange cardstock. For this one, I decided to add a little bit more dimension using my carved pumpkin. And then again, I'll use Lucky Clover for the stem and leaf. This card is only going to feature one tulip, but again, I'm going to add some dimension to it by layering the outline three times from white cardstock and once from black. I would have layered it all with black, but I don't have heavyweight black at the moment. So the white ended up working just fine. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm layering my three whites on top of each other and then the top layer will be my black outline. And then I will glue the outline layers on top of my orange shadow layer that has that little bit of dimension from the carved pumpkin. I think just adding a little bit of ink does make a difference. So off camera, I'm going to do the exact same thing with the stem and leaf, and then we can work on the card panel. So I have a orange panel here cut to five by five inches. I'm going to add a little bit of ink to the bottom of this just because it's a bright neon orange and I wanted to tone it down a bit. So the carved pumpkin is actually a very similar color, but it's more muted. So it's going to add just a little bit of shading, but I mostly used Carved Pumpkin to dull it out a bit. I'm going to add Abandoned Coral at the bottom to give it more of that shaded look. And I love doing this with ink blending. If you don't want to use a whole lot of muscle strength, you can use an already colored cardstock to create a really nice gradient without using as much ink. So I'm going to inlay a black heart in the center of this orange panel. I thought at first I wanted an orange heart and a black panel, but decided to go opposite, so that's why there's a large heart cut in the center here. I thought instead of throwing it away, why don't I just create an inlay? So I went ahead and glued down my orange panel. I'm going to glue my black heart, and then on top, I'm going to pop up my blue striped heart with foam tape. And then I'm going to take my dimensional flower and leaf, as well as the hello. I forgot to mention that I did cut the hello three times from heavyweight white and then added a black layer on top. So the hello is just as dimensional as the flower. And that little hello die cut came from the slimline shadow box from the October release from Scrappy Tales. And then this card is just going to be finished off with a couple more clear hearts. And that's it. I think this one's my favorite. I don't know what it is about it. I think it's the bright neon orange with the turquoise blues. I really like that combination. So our final complementary colors on the color wheel are red and green. Now, I cheated a bit because I didn't want to do red and green. I feel like it's too Christmassy and too Valentine-ish, which isn't what I was going for. So... I opted to cheat a little bit and do pink, which arguably is a shade of red, so I don't think it's like too far off. And I also added a little bit of orange. So you can see to the left, I have my flowers already assembled. I did the exact same thing I did for card one, where I die cut the shadow from a light colored cardstock and then the outline from a slightly darker shade of cardstock. So I have dark pink and dark orange outlines and light orange and light pink shadow layers and then the stems and leaves are always the same. For my little bouquet holder, I'm using this Hero Arts die. This creates like a newspaper wrap. I also use the newspaper text stamp that comes 
in the kit. So this is a Hero Arts kit that I got this die from. If it's still available, I don't think it is, but if you can buy it separately, I'll have it linked. But I know that Honeybee just came out with a very similar die that I'll link below as well. Um, but I thought that this would be cute to create, you know, a little newspaper wrap for my tulips. So here I am just sticking my leaves inside the wrap and adding my tulip heads. I'm doing the same thing where I'm holding everything down with my one hand and gluing the elements down with my other hand, just being very careful to try to not shift anything. You can definitely use press and seal here. I don't have any, and this seems to work out okay. And I love the pink and orange combination. This is the first card where I use two different colors of tulips. And I'm thinking for a future video, I definitely want to do rainbow tulips somehow, probably for like a pop-up. We'll see. But I wanted to have my sentiment. Originally, I cut the banner from that bright orange cardstock I used for the orange outlines of the tulips, but I just didn't like how it turned out. I'm going to stamp out a sentiment from the stamp set that says sending my love. So it definitely could work for Valentine's Day, but I think I'm going to use it more as a thinking of you card. And so I stamped that out with Versafine Onyx Black Ink, and I just didn't like the black ink, and I didn't like that bright color. So I recut the banner from white cardstock, and I stamped the same sentiment with um, Picked Raspberry Distress Oxide Ink. I also did add Picked Raspberry to the shadow layer of the pink tulips, and then I used that carved pumpkin for the orange tulips. I didn't show that because I've been kind of showing that throughout the video. I also die cut a white panel that's four by five and a quarter inches and I ran it through a polka dot embossing folder just to add a little bit of texture in the background. And then I'll just glue this entire bouquet down with my art glitter glue. Now the banner was overhanging because that newspaper wrap is quite dimensional. I decided to add foam tape to that banner to the sides of the banner that are overhanging the wrap. And then that's pretty much going to complete this card. I don't think I added those clear droplets just because I didn't think I needed them for this card. So I'm just going to mat it onto my A2 card base and then that will complete my fifth card. So originally I was gonna just do five cards but I had some leftover pink and orange flowers, so I just decided to create a bonus card here. So here it is at nighttime, and I don't even know, can you guys let me know if you saw a difference on when it became nighttime? Because you can see my light over to the top left corner a little bit. I'm not sure if I'll be able to fix that or not. I don't think it's too distracting, but overall I feel like the light has not changed at all in this video, and I'm super happy about it. So. I do have a watercolor panel that I just ink blended peacock feathers on and then I have a wide rectangle frame that I cut from white cardstock and you can definitely create a um, shaker card here but I'm not. I'm just going to add acetate behind this window and I'm going to pop it up with my double layered foam tape from Uline. So it is going to be quite dimensional and it is typically what I use for shaker cards but for some reason, I was enjoying the simplicity of this. I love all the white on the card. So I just decided not to add shaker bits, but you definitely can. So I'm going to glue my leftover tulips onto this peacock feather background. And then I will add my foam tape behind that wide white frame. And then remember that banner? The reason I left it in the video is because I decided to use it for this card. So I love when that happens, when you were bummed that it didn't work out on one card, but it, you can use it on another card. That rarely happens, but when it does, it's pretty satisfying. So that's it. That was a very simple card, um, but I like how that turned out. So here are all six cards I created. I miss die cutting. This was a lot of fun. Um, obviously stamping is tried and true and I'll probably work on a stamp next. Um, I'll feature one of my new stamp sets, but this is a really fun 
dye set to have you can do a lot of different things with it i'm definitely going to do a tulip pop-up basket i'm thinking in the future so i'm just uh, very inspired by this set so i will have it linked down below if you want to check it out um these um tulips oh my gosh i'm losing my train of thought these tulips were illustrated by me so it's really fun to see my illustrations come to life on cards so let me know what you guys think what is your favorite card if you haven't yet already please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you're notified when i post my next video all right guys i hope you have a wonderful week and i will see you next time bye